Hello everyone, it's Marie with your new school. Welcome back. I feel we've just spent all afternoon together, all day together. You guys have jumped on every single one of my e-learning webinars and I am so greatly appreciated of it. So I see Riverland Community College. I see Michael K. Gilman. I see who else is on here. Tricochi is on here. Educators, you don't have to type your name in the chat box. Um, I'm just doing it for students so I can keep track of who is, you know, what schools they are with um, so that they can get credit. Now, if you are required to um, report that you participated, let me know. Um, just send me a private email and I'll make sure to get you certificates and everything over for the webinars as well. So we're going to give everybody a couple more minutes. And then we get to move on to my favorite product, Holly Gel. Right. Welcome, 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 everybody. I'm pretty sure this is everybody who logged in to the Hard Gel webinar, but I will still introduce myself. So welcome back to those of you who have been on every single one of the e-learning webinars so far today. Welcome, welcome. It's Marie, the educator with your new school. This next webinar is going to be on the Polygel system through Nail Alliance and Gelish. Again, if you can please make sure you type in your name and your school name so that it shows up in the chat box so that I can track attendance. That would be wonderful. And then we shall get started. So I am going to minimize a couple of screens. And then we'll get started. All right. So welcome to the world of Nail Alliance. Since, well, I'm going to go over. In case anybody, if this is your first time jumping on, welcome. I'm Marie Straub, the educator with your new school. I'm a licensed cosmetologist and cosmetology instructor. I've been in the industry for 23 years and spent 15 of those 23 teaching cosmetology, hair, skin, and nails in the state of Illinois. So with Nail Alliance, our mission statement is to provide the salon industry with all the tools needed to help make salon businesses even more successful with the latest and greatest in nail products, establish opportunity for learning through proper education and training courses domestically and internationally, create superiority within the industry as the go-to nail manufacturer for state-of-the-art products, prove it to perform to the best of standards while upholding the motto done right from the start, and to understand the needs of the salon industry as nail professionals ourselves, 
create a clear understanding of the industry and the demand for the highest quality products and services possible, which is why quality has and will always be our number one priority. So who is Nail Alliance? We are the Jellish Soap Off Gels, Jellish Hard Gels, Morgan Taylor Nail Polish, Fair Luxury Manicure Pedicure Products, Nail Harmony, Rohesion, and more. So this webinar is on the Poly Gel System. This is my favorite artificial nail product um, to use. There is no odor. It, I mean, it truly is an easy product to use. So I cannot wait to show you guys if you have not used this product before. Try to get your hands on it and play with it because it truly is a lot of fun. So this kit that's, or this package that you see in front of you, this is the master kit. This includes a um, large bottle, I believe it's eight ounces of slip solution. You have four tubes of poly gel. You get cover pink, bright white, light pink and natural clear. You'll get a two ounce bottle of your nail surface cleanse. You will also receive a pH bond, top it off top coat and a foundation base coat, along with four keys to help dispense the product when it starts to get to the bottom of the tube. And then your poly tool, which is a um, number 10 gel brush on one end and a spatula on the other. So basically poly gel, we just made all hard gels and acrylic obsolete. So with poly gel, there is no ratio, no runny, no waste. Poly gel comes in convenient squeeze tubes, offering about 30 to 50 um, full sets per tube. And then we also have the poly gel synthetic brush restorer. Um, I highly recommend if you are gonna carry this product in your school to have a bottle of the brush restore in your dispensary or just somewhere where the students can use it to clean their poly brushes. I'm going to show you on camera what will happen if you don't keep your brush in its optimum condition. Um, so it's so important to really keep the brush in a working condition. So I'm going to show you what will happen if you don't. And then the actual poly tool. This is a patent pending multi-purpose tool. It has a synthetic number 10 brush on one end and a spatula on the other to help make applying poly gel a breeze. For those of you who are just jumping on, be sure to type your full name and your school name in the chat box so that we can send the attendance over to the appropriate schools. And then also please make sure that your microphone stay muted. So exactly what is polygel? So polygel is a tripolymer. It is a polymer from an, an acrylic, an oligomer from a hard gel, and a polymer from a lacquer. It is molded with an alcohol-based product called slip solution, and then it is cured in an LED or a UV light. Let me just go ahead and mute whoever's microphone that was. There we go. So the first thing you want to do is prep the nail. So again, our prep step is a dry manicure. Sanitize the nails in your client's hands. Push back the epidicum and clean the surrounding nail plate of any excess cuticle. Shape the natural nail using either your wood file or again, I like to use the 180-400. And then gently remove the shine using the 100 side of your 100-180 buffer. And then cleanse the nail, nail surface cleanse and a lint-free wipe. If you are going to be applying tips, you would do that at this time. And then after applying your tips, you will blend them into the natural nail, cut down the length, and then cleanse the nail again to remove the dust with your nail surface cleanse and a lint free wipe. Apply pH bond to further dehydrate the nail. And then you're going to apply foundation base coat. So there are, just so you guys know, there are YouTube videos out there that show using primer the ProBond acid-free primer with the poly gel. And when we first launched poly gel, those were the steps. However, over time, we have found that with poly gel, we're getting better adhesion using the foundation base coat instead of the primer. So we switched the um, application steps. So if there are still master kits floating around out there that come with a ProBond primer, um, it's just because that's how we used to apply it and we changed it. We now use foundation base coat. And I think we changed over to foundation maybe a year ago. So it's still fairly new that we've switched over using foundation instead of primer. So with the foundation, you do apply it the exact same way you would apply it if you were doing a gel polish application. You do 
very little. You want to use it very sparingly. You need a very thin application and you really want to massage it into the nail. Cap your free edge and then cure for five seconds in your 18G or one minute in a UV light. After the foundation has cured, you're going to take a clean, dry um, brush and you're just going to do a dry brush to clean or wipe the surface of the foundation. So after foundation has cured, it leaves, there's a thin layer that is on cured foundation and that layer can be very slippery and slick. So if you try to put the poly gel on top of that, you're probably not gonna get a very good adhesion. So always make sure to do the dry brush. And that's the same for if you were applying gel polish, that is key. So once you've done all your prep, now you're ready to apply your poly gel. So this is just a clear overlay. So you're going to squeeze the right amount of product or poly gel from the tube. Your amount is determined based on the length of your nail. So for shorter nails, you just need a smaller bead. And for larger, longer nails, you would need a larger bead. Then you'll use your spatula and slice the product with the spatula. And then you will roll the product onto the nail. You will then dip your brush into the slip solution and then begin to pat and press the product into the shape that you desire. Once you're satisfied with the shape, you are going to cure for 60 seconds in your 18G. After it's cured, you can take your 180 grit file and begin smoothing and shaping, and then you can buff with your 180 grit buffer, remove the dust with nail surface cleanse and lint-free wipe, and then finish with your top it off top coat. Cure the top coat for 30 seconds, remove the inhibition layer, and then apply nourishing oil. It truly is that easy. If you want to do a reverse pink and white over a natural nail, again, follow your same prep steps. After you've completed your prep steps and applied your foundation, you're going to squeeze the right amount of your pink of choice and you'll apply the pink to the back portion of the nail near the cuticle towards the center and you're going to use your brush in your slip solution. And I'm going to mute everyone's microphones again, sorry. So dipping your brush into your slip solution, you will then pat and press the product in the shape that you desire. You're also going to create a reverse smile line. Once you're satisfied with your smile line, you're gonna cure for 60 seconds in your 18G. Then you will squeeze a small amount of your white, apply the white poly gel to the free edge using your slip solution, dip your brush into your slip solution, and then pat the product in the shape that you desire, cure for 60 seconds. Now, when you're applying your white, you don't have to be perfect with the white. You've already created your smile line with your pink. And it's okay if it overlaps. It doesn't have to be perfect because when you go in and file with your 180 grit file, you're gonna buff away any of that excess white and it's gonna expose your perfect smile line. And then after you're done filing and buffing, you'll remove the dust with nail surface cleanse and a lint-free wipe. And then you will apply your top it off top coat. Allow that to cure for the recommended cure time. Remove the inhibition layer and apply your nourishing oil. Now you can use an e-file. I personally do not use an e-file on polygel. Polygel files very easily, just like the um, hard gel. So I find that using a 180 grit file is perfect. Um, you could use a 150 grit file if you feel that you need to. Um, but again, I feel like the 180 does just fine on its own. But if you are gonna use an e-file, um, we recommend that you use a medium to coarse part by fit to smooth and then use a 180 grit buffer to buff the surface of the nail. Be careful not to file the natural nail. Poly gel files a lot easier than acrylic or a hard gel. So with that being said, if you are using an e-file, be very careful because you can overfile it and take it right off. The only time I really use an e-file is if I'm removing, if somebody wants to remove their enhancement, then I'll use the e-file to get a majority of them the bulk off before soaking and or filing the rest off. So poly gel removal. Um, poly gel does not soak off. So there it's similar to a hard gel in that respect. 
So it is a file off product. You can use the e-file to get the majority of the product off, again, using a medium to coarse carbide bit. Otherwise, a 150 or 180 grit file works just fine to remove the bulk. You'll then switch to your buffer and continue to buff down the enhancement. Switch to your 220, 280 buffer to continue to buff and smooth the nail and then apply nourishing oil. So it does remove just like a hard gel. It does not soak off. So you could also use poly gel to do nail repair on natural nails if they have like a crack or a break and they don't necessarily need an enhancement. They just want their nail fixed. So poly gel is great for that as well. Other applications you can do with poly gel. You can have cultured teeth and white. If you are doing a sculptured paint and white, you will, your application is exactly the same as it would be if you did a hard gel. You first need to create an extension edge. I typically use either the really light pink or the natural clear, and I create my extension edge. I cure that for 60 seconds, and then I apply my poly gel just like I would any other application. So for the pink and white, I do my pink first, I apply, I do a reverse pink, I apply the pink, mold it up to the smile line that I want to create, cure the pink for 60 seconds, then I apply my white poly gel, cure the white poly gel for 60 seconds, and then do all my filing and shaping, exposing my smile line, buffing the nail, cleanse the nail with nail surface cleanse and a lint-free wipe, and finish with your top it off top coat. So in that respect, your pink and white is very similar to a hard gel. So you definitely want to create an extension edge first. And the reason why we want to do that is because the pink and the white are being cured separately. So they're not actually attached to one another like it is with acrylic. So we create that extension edge so that the pink and the white have something to sit on. And then we're encapsulating with the top it off top coat. So you do have to encapsulate with the top it off top coat. Now, if you are not using the gel top coat to finish your enhancement, you've done a pink and white, you then need to use the clear, the natural clear poly gel and do a thin layer to encapsulate your pink and white so that when you buff the nail, your pink and your white is completely encapsulated so that you, you can finish with just regular polish. I personally don't use regular polish, especially over my poly gel. The gel is especially over pink and white because the gelish top it off top coat creates such a beautiful high shine. So why wouldn't we use that? So lights that you can use. You can use the 545 with poly gel, but the 545 only has a 45 second timer and poly gel requires a 60 second cure. So you are gonna wanna do at least two rounds of curing so that you're getting proper cure times using the 545. Otherwise, we recommend that you use the 18G. With the 18G, it's recommended to use, it needs 60 seconds. So the highest setting on the regular 18G is 30 seconds. So you'd have to do two rounds of curing. Otherwise, if you have the 18G Comfort or the 18G Unplugged, both of those LED lamps have the 60 second um, button. So you just use the 60 second timer. So benefits of using poly gel. Poly gel has a pleasant odor and it's not the poly gel that has the odor it's the slip solution the slip solution is an alcohol-based product it has a bunch of conditioning agents in it and fragrance so it's not going to dry out the skin surrounding the nail that's another great benefit of poly gel is you don't have to worry about product sensitivity because there's no mixing ratio and the slip solution is just an alcohol-based product so unless your client's allergic to alcohol um, they should have no product sensitivity using poly gel. It is not self-leveling, so the product stays exactly where you put it. Curing can be done in both an LED or a UV lamp. If you are using a UV lamp, you do need to cure it for two minutes. And then poly gel is more flexible than an acrylic, but it's stronger than a hard gel. And then you can apply gel polish or regular polish over your poly gel, and then when you want to do a rebalance or a fill, you would fill it just like you would an acrylic. So a few things about poly gel. So we're going to do some comparison. So we're going to go over attributes. So we're going to talk about set time, play time, workability, 
level of difficulty, the weight of the product, your drying time, monomer odor, product wastage, and your application. We're going to compare polygel to acrylic and a hard gel. So your set time or play time. With polygel, it's infinite. You have all the time in the world to work with the product. It cures on demand. So the moment you put it in the LED light, that's when it's going to cure and harden. Acrylic, you're limited, and same with hard gel. With acrylic, as you know, the moment you create that bead, it starts to firm up and harden, so your work time is very limited when you're working with acrylic. Hard gel, it's the same, it's similar. We know that it doesn't harden until you put it in an LED light, but with hard gel, it doesn't stay put, it self-levels. So your work time is limited because you do need to either flash cure it or work very quickly so that you're not getting too much product pooling around the cuticle or the nail group. The workability, there is no chasing with polygel because again, it stays exactly where you put it. There is some chasing with, with acrylic, um, depending if you're working on a bead that's too wet, you gotta chase after the product. Um, and there's a lot of chasing on hard gel because it doesn't self-level that quickly. The level of difficulty, polygel is probably one of the easiest artificial nail enhancements to perform. Acrylic is pretty moderate. Hard gel, I would say, would be the most difficult out of the three. Until you get used to working with hard gel. Once you start getting used to working with hard gel, it's not that bad. The weight of the product. So polygel is featherweight in comparison to acrylic or hard gel. Acrylic is the heaviest of the three, so you definitely feel the, those enhancements on your nails in comparison to a hard gel. Hard gel is pretty moderate, depends on how thick you make your hard gel. Um, so it's pretty lightweight, but polygel is feather light. You really don't feel anything on your nails, which I love about polygel. Your drying time, 60 seconds in your LED. Acrylic, the moment you create that bead, you've got about eight to 10 minutes before it's fully cured, and then you have to file. Hard gel is a 30 second cure in an LED light. Monomer odor, there's no odor with polygel, with the exception of the slip solution. Acrylic, we all know monomer is a strong odor, and then there's no odor with hard gel. Product wastage, there is no wastage with polygel. You are squeezing out the right amount of product for the length of nail that you're creating. And if you do over squeeze too much out, you can always scrape it off and put it onto the next nail so that you're not wasting anything. There's moderate waste with acrylic, and there's a lot of waste with hard gel. Hard gel, there's a lot of waste because of having to, it self levels so quickly that you need to constantly be applying more to create the arc that you need until you really get used to using hard gel. Um, so there's a lot more waste with hard gel than there is any of the other two products. And your application. You do need an LED light for poly gel. You don't need any lamps of any sort for acrylic. And you do need an LED UV light for hard gels. So in my opinion, poly gel is the answer. There's no strong odor. It is really easy to use. It offers a fast service for your clinic floor to have a quick turnaround time. You can put the gelish soap on. Gel polishes over it or traditional is an amazing product and I can't wait to show you guys. Um, if you use the product, let me know in the chat box if you've used it. I would love to know. So for more information on Nail Alliance products, don't forget to contact your account executive and then for webinars, you would contact me. And I'm going to switch the camera on so that we can start playing with polygel. Let me just double check to see who is all logged in. Ooh, we've got a lot. We've got a few different people. So welcome, welcome. If you were just logging in, make sure if you have not done so already, please type your name and school name into the chat box so that we can track attendance. All right, so let's begin poly gel. So here are the squeeze tubes. As you can see, these are my two colors that I use the most. I use light pink and natural clear. If I can't squeeze anything else out of this, I may go grab my new, my new tubes. We'll see how well I can squeeze them out. And then we have our cover pink and our bright white. 
gonna grab my poly tool. So here's my poly tool. You have your spatula on one end and your brush on the other. Now, this brush is in good condition. I will show you what will happen if you do not keep your brush in optimum condition. Now, I did not throw away this brush and I actually do still use this brush. So, my spatula on one end. I use my spatula on one end to mix other colors. I actually use this now for nail art. And here's what your brush will look like if you don't keep it in, oh, that's better, in proper condition. So it starts to fray and the ends start to curl. I have tried everything to get this brush to stay flat and it just will not, not stay flat. Um, it just keeps curling. It ke I've even tried cutting these bristles off and nothing is keeping this brush back into its working condition. However, now you can see I have glitter and a bunch of other stuff in here because I do use this for nail art now. So I'll like dip into different powders and dust powders onto nails if I'm doing nail art designs. So now I really don't care about this brush. So I just shove it right back into the cap um, or I leave it like that. And it goes into my nail art stuff. Um, so keep your brush in optimum condition and to do that you need the synthetic brush restore so when i am done with my service i just take a little bit of brush restore i put it on a lint free wipe you could pour it into a dampened dish if you wanted to i just put it on a lint free wipe and then just really wipe my bristles down to keep them in great shape and that's all i do um, you do need a dampen dish for your slip solution. So here's your slip solution. And I love the way this smells, even I know it's alcohol, but the, it has conditioning agents in it and it just smells like grapefruit. It's so delicious. I love the way it smells. So that's the only thing that has odor. Um, you do need your little brush. This is my gel brush that I use for the foundation. So you are going to need your pH bond, foundation base coat, top it off top coat, and then some nourishing oil, an array of files. I just replaced the buffer pads on my cuticle pusher. So just like any other artificial nail surface, you're going to push back your cuticles with your cuticle pusher and buffer pads. And now we're going to apply our foundation. So for those of you who have not sitting on one of my soak off gel polish webinars, I'm going to show you how we apply the foundation base coat. So you want very little on your brush. And you're gonna start with your brush in the mid, about a quarter to halfway point of the nail. And you are going to really push down and spread out those bristles. And then you're gonna shimmy those bristles right to the freea or the cuticle area. You wanna be like a hairline away from the cuticle. 
Same with the nail groove, hairline away, and you really want to push this product into the nail. Massage it in there. Real thin, 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 thin application. Then I'm going to turn my brush and flip it and move on to the next nail. I am not going to dip into my bottle. And then I'm going to shimmy, massage this into the nail. Then I would flip this and move on to the next finger. Flip, move on to the next finger. At that point, if the length was this long, I would dip again for my thumb. But otherwise, for nails that are this length or my length, that would have been enough for all five fingers. So you really do want to use very little. Too much of your foundation and you're not gonna get proper adhesion. And with the gel polish, you're not gonna get adhesion as well. It'll peel off. You'll get lifting. You won't get the full two weeks. All right, I'm going to check my battery over here to see if they're on the charge. So this is 18 feet by 2 feet. That's your same LED screen, but mine is empty. Oh, I think I'm fully charged. All right, so I'm going to five seconds. I'm going to take my brush and I'm just going to wipe that surface and get that shininess and make it dull and just make it now a textured surface. So now I'm ready. That's all you would do. And if you were doing gel polish, now you can begin polishing. But we are going to do our poly gel. So I'm going to do just a natural nail overlay. So somebody who just wants a thin overlay over their natural nail. I'm really not going to build an art. This would be just for somebody who wants just a thin overlay, just for extra strength and support to their natural nail is what I'm going to do on this one. And then on this longer one, I will do a reverse pink and white. So for the natural overlay, we'll see how much of this clear I can squeeze out. And I don't have very much strength. That's a pretty short nail. And again, I'm not trying to build an arc when I'm doing an overlay on somebody's natural nails. I'm just trying to create some nice strength. So as you can see, I can sh shake this and it's not going anywhere. I can apply this to their finger and it's not gonna go anywhere. I'm gonna grab my pink. I'm going to do my pink and white. And I'm going to dispense my pink. Let's see if I can get this out. So since I am going to be building an arc, I'm going to grab a good size amount for this longer length now. To the nail. Now you can dispense all five fingers and work on your one hand. You could be really mean to your client and dispense all ten fingers if you want, um, but then they would have nowhere to, they can't use the other hand. So let them have their cell phones, but don't dispense all ten fingers, don't make them mad, unless they're your friend and you really want to. We're going to grab our slip solution, we're going to dip our brush into our slip solution. So the slip solution, this has nothing to do with the strength of the product. The slip solution is really only designed to keep your bristles saturated so that you don't get the product stuck in your brush. That is all it's for. So you're gonna dip into your slip solution. Now remember, it is alcohol based. So alcohol evaporates fairly quickly. So you're just going to pat and press, pat and press, flatten this out. Again, this is just a natural nail overlay. This is not, we're not building an arc of any sort. We're just creating strength to the natural nail. The nice thing about the slip solution, and because there's no product sensitivity, 
I'm not too concerned by touching their skin. I can really get into this nail groove and make sure that I'm not touching the skin. That's the only thing that you really need to be aware of when working with poly gel um, is to not have any contact with the skin. The moment you get come in contact with the skin, you're gonna get lifting. So you really do wanna be a hairline away. So really get in there and push that product so that it is not touching the skin. And when you feel your bristles start to stick to the poly gel, that's when you wanna dip back into your slip solution. And then you can start patting and pressing. Now, if you put too much slip solution and you start to liquefy your poly gel, that's when you start breaking down the strength of your poly gel. So too much slip solution, you're gonna get breakage because you've now weakened your poly gel. And a nice rule of thumb is if you do get too close to your cuticle, you can use your spatula because that is the perfect diameter or space between the natural nail and your product. So that's a good rule of thumb, how the distance between your cuticle and your product. So this one, I didn't really create any arc. I just kind of created a nice, just thin application over the entire nail so that she has a nice overlay. Now for my pink and white, it's the same process. You're still going to dip into your slip solution. And then we're going to push the product. nice and thin. I got too close to the cuticle right there, so I'm just going to use my brush and kind of just push it away. Oops. I'm feeling it sticking to my brush, so I want to dip it back into my slip solution so I don't have it sticking. Just making sure that I'm nice and tapered near my cuticle. I don't want it to be too thick near the cuticle. So just kind of like you would acrylic or a hard gel. Just want to shape your product. I'm also checking for my arc where I want my arc placement to be. And now I'm just creating my smile line. So there's where you have all the time in the world to perfect your smile line. Now, that could be also a downfall, having all this time, because then you tend to overwork and you're spending too much time. So if you are a perfectionist, this could be your downfall, because then you're going to want to spend too much time creating your smile line. Okay, so I'm quite satisfied with that. I'm quite satisfied with my shape. Maybe not, all right, I really should just leave it alone and move on. So we are going to say that we are satisfied with our reverse smile line. And then we were going to, so an arc placement. Arc placement is truly based on length of your nail. So the longer your nail, the further back your arc placement needs to be. The shorter the nail, the more center your arc placement needs to be. Because the longer your nail, you need that support in the back to help with any type of impact that your nail is going to achieve. Also, to also help with arc placement is your C-curve. Having a really nice C-curve helps to add strength. The flatter your nail is, the weaker your nail is. The more of an arc or curve you have, C curve, the stronger your enhancement will be. And that is true in architecture. So if you look at um, 
like the museums and all these old buildings that have all these archways, archways have the best support. So think of your nails as a building and you're creating a structure. So you definitely want to have a nice C curve and you also want to have a good arc. And again, the longer the nail, the further back you need that arc placement or your apex to be. And then the shorter the nail, the more centered you want it to be for that impact. Because if you put too much weight here and you hit have impact and you have too much of an arc or a short nail that's too far up here, you're going to cause breakage. So on a longer extension. So if I put an arc right here on a longer extension, I'm creating too much weight and I'll get breakage. All right, so I'm going to cure that for 60 seconds. Wrong LED light. I was going to grab the wrong light. 60 seconds and cure. So like, let me find a piece of paper and I guess that would be a good example. Do I have a piece of paper that I can use that's small enough to show on camera? All right, hopefully this will work. This was from one of my forms. So if you have a nail that has just a slight C curve, I'm just gonna give that a slight little bend. When I push on this, it's gonna break or bend. Now if I create a tighter of a C curve and I push on this, I'm getting less bending and pressure because of my C shape. I mean, this is the perfect example I can give with paper. I don't really know how else I can do it. So I have to use it more. Out a little bit, bending and breaking. So it's a curve murky, and then the longer your nail, you need the support in the back so that when you're putting that pressure of typing or you know whatever you do on a daily basis, you need you need that support to soften the blow on that impact. All right, let's take a look at this. So here's a couple things you can do. Now you could go ahead and put your white right on top of this. You could even take your file and re, like if you really want to redefine your smile line, you could take your new file and go in there and file that up. The only thing I have with that is that you're losing your foundation base coat, but it can be done and it will hold. So you can do that. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to squeeze out a small little bead of my white. I always get in the habit of recapping your product um, just in case you don't want to leave this open on accident and then it gets exposed to the LED light and now you've cured your poly gel into your tube and you just wasted an entire tube. I'm going to roll find my slip solution, dip into my slip solution, and mold my white. All right, that was way too much white. <laughs> so let's just say I did use too much or you use too much. You can just scrape some of this off and roll it onto the next nail so that there's no wastage. Watch, I took too much off and I'm gonna have to go back and put more on. So I just want to make sure I'm getting really deep down into my curve or my smile line. And then also I just want to make sure I don't have any product underneath. 
because I'm not going to use it. Unless you have an e-file and you have a cone shape bit, then you can use that to clean up underneath the free edge. And I do. I just not going to use it. All right. So we're just going to cure our white. I don't care if it's fancy or pretty on my pink because I'm just going to file that off when I go in and file. So we're going to give that a 60 second cure and then I can start filing. So since I am done applying, I'll show you how I clean this. So I'm just going to take some of my Brush restore and put that on a lid free wipe. And then I'm just going to clean my bristles and make sure that I don't have any product in there. Just do a dry section, just wipe it. And I'm just going to keep that clean and then recap. For my natural nail overlay, you can either use your 180 grit file. Sometimes, depending on how thin I've made my overlay, um, if it's just an overlay to fix a like a little crack, and I've just added a little poly gel to where the crack is, and I kept it really thin, I only use a buffer, and I just go in and buff the nail. I don't even use a, a file. If I'm creating an over, like an entire nail overlay like this one, I use my 180 grit file and I just gently smooth out the surface. I'm not trying to create, you know, I just want to make it nice and smooth. And I'm really gentle. I'm not putting any pressure on my file on my filing because it's such a soft product that it will you'll over file it so you just really want to be gentle does not need a lot of filing especially if you're doing just a natural nail overlay now if you did a natural nail overlay that you're that has really long nail like the client has natural long nails and they're looking for that support and strength you may need to build a, a little bit more of an arc because now you're adding weight to their nail so you do need to build a bit of an arc and then for my white, I will go in with my file. And the same thing like for acrylic or hard gel, I like to angle my file at a 45 degree angle to create that nice arc or taper north towards that free edge. I'm just kind of removing that dust so I can see if I've exposed all of my pink smile line. I'm pretty sure I've gotten most of it. And again, I'm just using the 180 grit. I'm not even using the 150. Um, and I was able to file away and expose my smile line with no problems without having to use the 150. Now, if you feel that you put way too much product, 
and it's way too thick, then by all means, use your 150 to get some of that bulk off, but you really don't need to. The 180 does just the trick. Again, have your clients go wash their hands. It's my sink. They're washing, they're washing, they're washing. Lint free wipe. Nail surface cleanse. Remove the dust. All right, so we did the cooler pink. Earlier this morning, we did the warmer pink. I'm wearing the cool mauve, so for the mannequin hand, I'm going to the color, which is called It's Your Mauve. So for the overlay, we will polish, and then I'll just cover the pink and white with our top it off top coat. Now, you can do an ombre now. We didn't talk about ombre at all in any of our official nail services that we've done, but you can do it with poly gel. Um, I don't recommend it though. It is difficult actually to achieve a really nice ombre with poly gel. It can be done. It's just extremely time consuming. I'm trying to see. I know I filmed it before. Um, so this was the ombre that I did with poly gel. You do definitely want to use the cover pink when you're doing an ombre. The sheer pink or the light pink, it's just too sheer and you don't get that nice diffusion between the pink and the white. The problem I have with poly gel and doing a ombre is the amount of time it takes to do it because it is not a product that blends well with other products. Each color is cured separately. When you are blending, you have to apply your white, really thin it out, cure that, apply your pink to the cuticle area, and then thin it out coming towards the cuticle free edge, cure that, add the white, blend it back, cure it, add the pink, blend, and you have to do super thin applications. Otherwise, if you put too much, you're really too thick of a nail. If you put, and if you don't blend it enough and make it thin enough, you're not going to get that nice soft um, blend between your pink and your white. And you also still need to build an arc, which is kind of hard when you're doing a bunch of thin layers to create that arc. So it can be done. Obviously, I've done it, but it take, it's time consuming. So I would never choose poly gel to do a ombre with on all 10 fingers. You'd be there all day. So if you are, if somebody is really looking for an ombre, I would probably do acrylic or gel polish. So we're gonna finish with our top it off top coat. that a cure do I have an when is the next when are we doing acrylic somebody let me know what my actual schedule is <laughs> acrylic Friday 4 p.m. I time yes so just remind me though, because I'll probably forget by Friday. So somebody, when we log in on Friday, um, remind me that you want to see an ombre French for the acrylic. And I will do that on the Friday 
webinar. You just have to remind me because, you know, my brain is everywhere but here. So sometimes I forget. So just remind me. And yeah, we'll do it on the Friday webinar. So the last thing we're going to do is cleanse the nail. Get all that sticky inhibition layer off. And then apply your nourishing hand or nourishing oil. Uh, the mannequin hand. You can actually, I mean, you can get it through us, but I'll be quite honest with you, you can get it on Amazon. And I think they were like, I don't know, $60, $70, depending on the brand. But you can get these on Amazon. And they're great. Um, I did buy the refills on Amazon. These are not the refills that belong with this hand. So word of caution, these sometimes pop off very easily because I did not order the hand. So I have, this, mine's called the Nail Trainer Hand, and it is by Essential Nails. I should really order their, their replacement caps, but it takes forever to ship from them, so I just really do get it from Amazon. And these, every once in a while, if you've seen me on other webinars, these have popped off on me numerous times because they don't really fit very well. I just make it work. It is what it is. These are also the airbrush tips so they're very flexible and I like that because they're very similar to a natural nail. I can cut these down but these are really for airbrushing and nail art but I use them for everything. The only thing another caution is nail tips don't glue very well to these plastic fingers so if you are gluing tips on you really got to hold it there for a long time to get them to stick. That's the only downfall about them but other than that these pop off and then you just Snap them, you'll see um, from doing the dip webinar, I've got dipping powder kind of stuck in there. Um, but yeah, these just all pop off, and then you'll know that it's secure when you hear the clicking sound, and then they're snapped in. So yeah, I highly recommend these, they're great. So there you have it, we have our natural nail overlay. We have a natural nail and or if you did a form, it would be still the same application, pink and white with poly gel. Any questions, Ms. Jones? Gel polish does not have a no tap top coat. We used one in the hard gel line, and I don't know why it was discontinued. It used to be called Dry Armor, um, which was a, a, a no cleanse top coat, but we no longer make them. I'll be honest with you, I don't like the no cleanse. I find that the no cleanse are not as shiny as the cleanse top coat. However, I do know that if you are trying to do like those chrome powders, like the, um, that's what they're called, the chrome powders, you need a um, no cleanse top coat. So no, we do not have one. Charge for a full set of poly gel. I charge exactly how I would charge for acrylic. I don't change the pricing. So whatever you charge for your acrylics is what I would charge for poly gel. Price point, it's about the same. Like I'm going to go through the chat box. I think I feel like I missed a few questions. Nice place. Maybe I didn't. Hopefully, I didn't miss anybody's questions. If I missed anybody's questions, please just retype them. All right, I think I got all the questions. I hope I did. All right. Well, thank you guys so much. I am not, this was my last webinar for the evening. Now I get to go through all of the attendance and it's coming to you. So thank you guys so much. Enjoy the rest of your evening. And I will be logging in tomorrow morning for those we want to join for a Color Lab Custom Blend Powders, um, which is a makeup line webinar. So thank you guys again so much. Enjoy the rest of your afternoon. Bye-bye.